Will you do more damage to your body by leaving an injury alone and not having surgery. I'm Dr. David Geyer, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine specialist, and I provide education and commentary on all sorts of sports and exercise injuries and injury treatments and injury prevention for athletes and active people, probably much like yourself, so that you can stay healthy and perform your best. One of the most common operations in all of orthopedic surgery, far and away the most common surgery we do in the sports medicine world is surgery for a meniscus tear, mainly trimming out the part of the meniscus that's torn, what we call partial meniscectomy. It's a very, very common injury and one of the challenges with a meniscus tear is that they very often don't heal on their own. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have surgery, but in somebody that's having a lot of symptoms, you know, things like their knees locking in a certain position or significant popping, really, really bad pain that's limiting their ability to do what they want to do, very frequently we talk about surgery to treat it. Now one of the questions that people ask is, you know, do I have to have surgery or can I just leave it alone? Am I going to do any more damage to my knee? And so in today's Ask Dr. Geyer video, I want to discuss that very question. Okay, Sylvia asks, what if you don't have your torn meniscus repaired? What are the consequences with time? Will it do more harm not having the surgery? Well, Sylvia's question, again, is so important because again, it's just such a common injury. Now, one of the things we've known over the last, you know, maybe 10, 12 years is that people, you know, in their 40s, especially 50s, 60s, 70s, with what we call degenerative meniscus tears, and again, the meniscus is the C-shaped shock-absorbing cartilage between the femur and the tibia, the thigh bone and the shin bone, and when you start to get older and your knee starts to degenerate, you basically develop arthritis, you can also develop sort of wear and tear uh, changes to the meniscus, degenerative tears to the meniscus. And there have been a number of studies in recent years that have sort of questioned how effective going in surgically and trimming the part of the tear out actually is because a lot of the problem that they're having is arthritis type pain. So I think one of the questions is just because you have a meniscus tear, maybe your primary care doctor ordered an MRI and it showed a meniscus tear, that alone doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have surgery. It gets back to a couple things. One, and most importantly, your symptoms. Can you do what you want to do as well as you want to do it? Especially if you have a fairly normal knee in terms of no arthritis, you've got normal cartilage lining of the ends of the bone, and you have mechanical symptoms, the catching, the locking, the popping with twisting motions, things like that, and the pain's not getting better with the trial of rest and activity modifications, surgery may be a good option for you. One of the things I've heard in recent years, when I see people as second opinions for a meniscus tear, they saw somebody else, another orthopedic surgeon, you know, found out they had a meniscus tear and they were told, hey, you absolutely have to have surgery. If you leave it alone, you're gonna get basically early arthritis. And I've always questioned whether or not that's actually true. You know, I think that if you're gonna develop arthritis down the road, that may be predetermined by the fact that you have a meniscus tear. Leaving it alone, if that shock absorber is not normal anymore, so it, essentially, if you're gonna develop arthritis, it's gonna happen anyway. And we do know that after surgery for a partial meniscectomy, that 10, 20 years later, when you remove some of that shock absorber, yes, you're at a higher chance of developing arthritis changes in your knee. It's not guaranteed, but it's certainly more likely than somebody your same age, same weight, same gender, that doesn't have a meniscus tear. But the flip side of that is if you can't do what you wanna do, you can't play sports, you can't exercise, you can't squat to pick up your kids, you can't uh, do something as part of your job because of your pain, then maybe surgery is an option. Now, could you in theory do more harm? I think that's probably more true with the young kids, high school age, college age kids with a meniscus tear. In theory, if they keep playing on it, they could catch the meniscus tear between the bones with twisting motions in sports and actually make the tear bigger, even make it a tear that was repairable and now it's not and you have to trim out the entire part of the meniscus. I don't think that's as big of a deal for those of us, you know, if you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, especially the upper ages of those range, uh, I don't know that it's really harmful. Try a course of non-operative treatment. You know, maybe a period of modifying your activities or rest from what you like to do. Maybe a course of anti-inflammatory medications. Maybe you put ice on it. You know, there's lots of different things you could try. And if that's enough to get you better, terrific. You potentially avoid surgery and some of the, albeit small, but still it is surgery, there's risks involved. So I think that can always be a good thing 
if you can avoid surgery and do everything you want to do. If you can't, then it's worth talking to your orthopedic surgeon about you know, whether or not surgery is right for you and what that entails. Okay, have you had a meniscus tear? And did you have surgery for it? Did you wait and see how your symptoms resolved? I would love to hear your experience. I'd love to hear what happened, what you tried and how it went. You know, and I bet readers and listeners and viewers from all over the world would love to hear your experience as well. So below this video, share your comments, share your experience so that hopefully it can help other people going through the same problem. And if you know somebody dealing with a meniscus tear, you know, he or she may be trying to decide, you know, do I have surgery? Please share this video with him or with her so that hopefully the video can help him or her make a decision that's best for them. Okay, if you like videos like this and you want more information on sports and exercise injuries, sports and exercise injury treatments and injury prevention, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I record a couple of these videos every single week and I'll deliver those directly to you. And last, there's so many resources, not just these videos, but written articles and audio content on ways to stay healthy and perform your best that I only share, completely for free, mind you, but I only share by email. So subscribe to my uh, email list, and I know that sounds daunting and it sounds awful, like I'm gonna flood your email with spam and stuff. I don't do that. I only share resources that can help you with sports and exercise. So go to my website, drdavidgeyer.com. The link's below this video. Enter your name and your email address right at the top of the screen, and I'll start delivering those resources directly to you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Again, I'd love to hear your comments if you've had a meniscus tear and what you decided to do about it. I look forward to seeing you right here in our next Ask Dr. Geyer video. Thanks so much.